ವಿಡಿಯೋ ಆಮೇಲೆ ಕಳಿಸಿ So it is absolutely exceptional to have the principal cast and the director of 17ers a Kannada film which is premiering at New York Indian Film Festival I watched it and I was left gobsmacked and I'm just so glad to have director Prithvi uh actor Sherlyn and Neeraj with us so thank you guys for joining me on Filmy Shilmi and a warm welcome to you all Thank, thank you so much thank for having us Pleasure is all mine. So, Prithvi, I'm going to begin with you. Uh, you know, I think when I was watching the film, it really made me realize the complexities of the laws and statutes in India and how a small mistake, you know, which we call in Hindi in Hindi, like, you know, and how one docile mistake can really snowball into a much larger and life-damaging issue. So, where did this idea develop from? uh well you see this uh, idea to explore uh, uh, these incidences that uh, have been happening in india for uh, the last few years uh, was on my mind uh, for a while actually for a few years uh, the question was where do you take it from there you have the inc- incidents you have something happening on the college involving the minors but then what happens next how do you explore it there are multiple uh, directions that uh, a theme like that that an idea like that could go into uh, it could turn into a teenage drama set on the campus uh, slightly raunchy or whatever uh, it could turn into uh, the family uh, issues up to uh, primary uh, characters involved or it could uh, lead to a lot more complicated situation involving caste class and then legal complexities uh and then uh, you know explored in every, everyone's face uh so it took a while to develop that uh, idea in that direction uh, to you know uh, because everything else wouldn't make the film that much original uh, even if it is authentic it wouldn't make the film that original so what i wanted was to take an audience into the world that they are not familiar with yes the incidents they know but uh, what happens what ma- what might what could happen to them because what are all the legal complications involved what are all the statutes that uh, get uh, you know cited in such a situation what is the legal route that one might take generally they don't take that's the point actually generally the issue like this they don't do anywhere they just get uh, they, it just ends in the college itself but suppose there is there are people involved and suppose they want to take it in different directions where would it go uh, and that's when uh, my co writer uh, anupama hegde uh, came into picture actually she is a high court lawyer and uh, she brought in a lot of uh, you know this uh, legal um, interesting uh, information into the film and that helped me explore the film to take it in a direction that uh, at least i feel is slightly original and that's gripping that will you know uh, keep an audience hooked and uh, with the twists and turns that keep on coming with uh, the question keep on arising what's next so that's the whole idea of uh, developing a script like that mm-hmm. very candid uh, and i think also the fact that uh, when i initially read the synopsis of the film and i you know read a few articles based on it uh it's talked about the caste disparity and caste bias and you know very honestly prithvi i i get very scared and very nervous and apprehensive when something is about caste discrimination because i feel like people often use that as a way to demonize hindus or demonize a particular community but i think what really struck me was how you tried to really tell it in a very neutral perspective where there was no sort of leniencies to either side you know it was like a uh, literally you were literally like a uh, a fly on the wall i think that's what i really liked so how conscious and careful and sensitive were you i think when you were dealing with this subject in particular oh, very much because see uh, one thing that we need to look at uh, this subject is that uh, the incidents that takes place is in our is in an ar- urban setup now suppose the same incidents has had taken place in a in a semi urban or rural setup and the same caste angles had been uh, infused into the story then it would have gone into a different direction completely different direction but in an urban setup and i i most of my films are set in in, in an urban uh, uh, in an environment uh, I, because i i also feel that this is something that's not been explored in in uh, in in all uh, you know earnestly in in uh, uh, parallel cinema 
or even in uh, commercial cinema for that matter. Uh, so given that setup, it was very important that you had to take a kind of a balanced approach. That's why I say when people say caste, uh, you know, discrimination, all those things, I usually don't use that word. I use the word caste dynamics mm. because it's very complex. It's not that simple. You know, it's not as simple as, uh, uh, you know, uh, two plus two equal to four. It's not that simple at all with the caste dynamics of, uh, you know, in Indian you know, system. In urban, in urban, uh, even in urban setup, let's say if it's South India, even in, let's say in, in Bangalore, if you compare it to some other uh, city in the South, it will be different actually. It will not be the same. Uh, so here I want to take it, I wanted to take a slightly more polished and balanced approach. Uh, despite, uh, you know, whatever the uh, things that are going on with the caste and other things, people, uh, when somebody is looking at it, they have to see that it's a complex situation and in, and in many ways, nobody is, is an oppressor and nobody is a victim. Everybody suffers from it. That's the idea that I wanted to, you know, convey. Some may not agree with this, and to an extent, I will also not agree to that. You know, if we look at it, if we look at the caste things in general, mm. but the approach that I wanted to take for this film was that uh, balanced approach, and uh, that's the result that you have uh, on screen. Mm -hmm, right. And I think for uh, the two talents that we have here, I mean, first of all, I mean, a hats off to both of you. Uh, I think um, you know it's not easy to begin your first film roles right i mean i believe this was your first uh appearances um that too in such an emotionally challenging role so i think what i would like to know because obviously i don't think you guys were 17 at the time when you were shooting this you were definitely younger but definitely not 17 you were adults then when you were shooting this but did you both actually have to reflect back on how you would have perhaps had to hypothetically react to the situation had you been 17. I think Sherin, we'll, we'll, we'll start with you and then Rod, yeah. maybe we can come to you. Uh, see, I, uh, I don't know, like, maybe I would react to that if I, if something had happened like that when I was 17 or something. So, but uh, taking the situation that we have shown in the movie, I don't think so the other people who are there in the college would get to know all those things because as sir told, these things uh, in reality, they would not go to that extent. So maybe we would not get to know what is happening with the people who have actually done that. Yeah. Right. What about you, Neeraj? Sir, I did give it a thought. Like uh, if I was in Nari's place, um, I wouldn't do uh, what he did. First of all, I wouldn't share it with anyone. Uh, so, yeah, being an immature, um, like he did it for like sh showing off, right? So, um, I can uh, connect to it like um, my cousins and all, you know, this generation uh, kids are like that. They want to show off. Uh, they don't think about the future, what it might um, bring. So, I had to think back, but I couldn't connect because I am not a person who would, uh, you know, uh, do such things. So, but... Uh, uh, the character was, uh, he's a good guy, but he wanted to, like, you know, uh, show off and all that. Um, so I was thinking, um, just because your one decision uh, that you did it out of immaturity, how much uh, trouble uh, your family, uh, the people around you had to go through. So I had uh, given it a thought, sir. Like, what I would do if I was uh, in his position, I would uh, maybe think beyond all that some people do so some people go to the extent uh, uh killing themselves like uh, they can't handle the pressure um they cost to the family uh, to the people around them so i i did give it a lot of thought actually right and you know i think prithvi for me uh, one of the most principal themes of this film and i think what i'm personally drawn to as a viewer as a journalist is the theme of loss of innocence, you know, I think somehow what we see and what happens to these two kids is that loss of innocence, which is very much there. I mean, their lives are almost finished before it even began. So I think, you know, as actors, you know, I'm sure you must have had to really work with them and sort of, you know, get them into that frame, especially because they were fresh as well. But I think for you as a director, did you have to reflect very deeply on that theme of loss of innocence as well to bring out that essence uh, 
uh, see, generally when I write, see, because uh, I I look at filmmaking from two different perspectives, one writing and uh, direction. Uh, and uh, the focus of all these things is in the writing rather than uh, the direction, because when you have written something like that, then it reflects in the in the direction. Whatever it's there on the paper, ideally it should get reflected you know, on the screen. Uh, so when writing, um, some of the themes themes are not really conscious, you know, conscious uh, uh, decisions. For example, like you said, uh, the loss of innocence. But then we have to look at it uh, slightly differently because, well, although in my story, yes, they are uh, innocent, and there is a, you know, we could say that yes, uh, whatever their act was out of uh, immaturity or ignorance, and then whatever consequences they faced. Uh, through that process, it was uh, in a way a coming of age or you know whatever. At least for Deepa, more than Hari. Uh, but uh, you know, then again, if you look at the reality, it's it's actually see uh, for the convenience of the story, I had to choose uh, two students who were seventeen years old. Right. But if you look at reality, what's happening and uh, the age at which you know these incidences are uh, coming out, uh, it's taking place at a much younger age. In fact, in high, in high school, you could say. Uh, so only within the confines of my story do you see this, you know, loss of innocence, and that is, uh, I'm not sure if I can answer it as a conscious decision or not, uh, because my focus was more on the, you know, on other aspects like, uh, you know, the, the legal complications, the caste, all these things. Right. Maybe subconsciously it has come out, you know, loss of innocence. Uh, so if it has come out, then it's a good thing. I would take it as a good <laughs> thing, and uh, that adds to this, you know, uh, story definitely. Oh gosh, I think things that happen subcon like you know without you consciously trying to do it, I think those are the you know real gems I would say in cinema uh, for me. And I think you know I I'm glad you mentioned the whole uh, approach to it because what I loved about this film is that even though it was realistic, uh, you know you go straight into the action. You do not build these lengthy backdrops. You go straight into the action, and yet it maintains our attention throughout the film. In fact, there is a very strong thriller aspect to the movie where, you know, your stomach is constantly churning and you're constantly on edge as to what will happen next. As a filmmaker, how does one manage to grasp that, grasp the thriller aspect through the lens of reality? Uh, well, I, w I will not give you an interesting answer, but I will stick to the basics. It is sticking to the basics, actually. Uh, right. the craft of writing you know the you you understand the craft of writing you stick to it then you get good results that's it honestly anything else would be you know just to impress an audience but uh, I, i'm going to give you a straightforward answer it's the craft so if you have a good hold on the craft you can always you know uh, create that and i have done that in my previous films also i'm sure you've not seen them uh, one of them is going to be uh, released soon pink Alien. and after after that even uh, 17 or sadhana Nento is also going to be released in cinemas uh, so even in my previous films, I have done that. It's it's the craft. It's the basic writing, you know, craft. I <laughs> I don't want to go beyond that because if I did that, then I will be obscuring the uh, matter to an audience. So let it be <laughs> on record that it's the craft. Very true. Well, no, I think that's I think that's true though, right? Like I mean, shuruato basic se hota You know, I think whenever whatever we choose to do, it's always it's always good to go basics. And in fact, I'm going to talk about the craft, and I would love to know. Uh, the actors' perspective actually about working on that. I asked you earlier about the emotional and mental aspect, but when it came to the actual physical aspect of working on set and, you know, uh, with dealing with the emotional, actually having to deal with that, how did you both uh, react to that? So I think Neeraj will go first to you and then Sharin will go to you. Sir, uh, in, uh, while shooting, we were damn serious, like uh, we were in the zone. Prithvi sir uh, was very serious, so we had to be serious. <laughs> we didn't make any uh, fun and all. So, uh, yeah, the uh, supporting actors, everyone were like, whatever you saw, I, I hope you liked everyone's performance. Like, everyone put their heart and soul into this movie. So, everyone helped us in a way to uh, react the way it came out. You know? Acting is reacting. So, because of them, I think it uh, helped us even more. Right. And what about you, Sharon? Would you like to add anything to that? Uh, yeah. So uh, when we were shooting, uh, we had a rehearsal before shooting. 
so it was much easier for us to when we were actually shooting it was easier for us to uh, see what is actually happening and how to how do we act on that and uh, we we were not uh, like uh, restricted to do this only or that like whatever it is written in the script we had our choice we had our own choice ki hum uh, kaise bol sakte hain cards mm. dialogues ko so yeah. it was not restricted ki aise hi bolo jaise likha hai waise hi bolo तो वहां पे भी वो एक इजी हुआ कि हम अपने मतलब आई डिड दैट बट लाइक पर्सनली आई थॉट दैट आई एम इन दिस सिचुएशन हाउ वुड आई रिएक्ट टू दिस इफ एक्चुअली आई वाज इन दिस अगर रोना है तो मैं कैसे सच में कैसे रोती हूं तो आई मैं वैसा सोच के आई डिड दैट या एंड यू नो विद यू व्हेन आई वाज वाचिंग योर फिल्म इट इंस्टेंटली रिमाइंडेड मी ऑफ अनदर मूवी दैट आई सॉ सम टाइम बैक वुड कोर्ट uh you know the sort of uh the way the atmosphere was captured and you know um the way it talks about the legalities and all these emotional aspects to it was so beautifully fused uh but you know i feel for the longest amount of time you know i think very few uh i mean this is of course not a courtroom drama it's more of a social drama thriller but when it does come to films to do with legal stuff i feel like there's been a tendency to really romanticize the idea and it's very overtly dramatic you know uh, I, but as i think this is definitely one of the more rooted ones uh how important is it for such films in india to actually be rooted uh, when it comes to dealing with that because i feel what's happened is that over the years because it's kind of romanticized the idea of it the subject matter kind of gets diluted as well Oh, well it's very important actually the re- uh, i feel that the reason behind exaggerations uh, romanticization all these things of a courtroom uh, uh, situation is exactly the lack of substance that is the reason see when you don't have substance when you when your story when your uh, particular scene is not re- well researched and uh, the conflicts are not very well drawn that's when you have to go for exaggeration and other things but if your conflict is very well drawn and then you would go into the different you know intricacies of uh, legal uh, you know uh, uh, proceedings and then you pick up a few things from there that will make a particular scene juicy with all the conflicts that's needed with multiple conflicts not just unidirectional with multi directional conflicts you don't need exaggeration say as a, as a, as a scene like that in itself will be interesting enough you don't need uh, uh, bloated uh, uh, drama you don't need uh, uh, you know over the top shouting you don't need any of that just the real conflicts in in a particular scene will make it interesting and be, exactly because of lack of that uh, in commercial cinema they have been doing that you know they have been uh, i feel that that's i mean there, there may be other obvious reasons but that's one of the reasons why they have been uh, exaggerating those scenes but we uh, in my see I, I, one thing that i do in my films is i the conflicts tend to be strong and it's not just one directional it's multi directional so when you have multiple conflicts that are cross crossing each other uh, you don't need anything else that in itself will hook an audience uh, through the end and in even in a very dull uh, court scene it can hook an audience Mm-hmm. and you know i'm very fascinated to know actually and i would love to know as well from the actors who their inspirations is when it comes to actors or whose work they like to 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 see but i think prithvi for you to begin with who would you say is your idol or inspiration when it comes to filmmaking well there are plenty i mean see more than the person it's the films that uh, you know uh, yeah. that actually inspire that there are plenty i can't really you know even begin but then in if i have to look at kannada then uh, i do admire kasarwali's films a lot uh he is one of the very few filmmakers of uh, the previous generation who had a very good control over uh, his uh, written material mm-hmm. uh and of course the big names they are always there and then i also uh, look at uh, iranian films they are very to me that's personally very very uh, interesting the performances i don't know why we can never match their performances i don't know as a director i, I you know i think that's my failure because Okay, when i look at some of their films that's just mind blowing i mean it's just uh, you can't believe that such a performance is possible hollywood cannot give such a performance in any in a 100 years i can tell you that much but yeah. it's it's happening in iran which is very strange which is a you know strange case to me uh, hard for me to understand also but such performances i don't understand why we can't do in our films even uh, even i you know i feel that my own writing 
is not as strong as let's say uh, the Persian films. Uh, my own direction is not as strong as Persian films. So I look up to Persian films a lot. I uh, admire them. Uh, I learn a lot from them. Uh, yeah. So these are some of the. You know, yeah, uh, I mean, it's quite interesting to hear you say this because I feel like uh, if there is anywhere which I think has managed to maintain its audience and the audience has kept it from the first day and has changed despite the global thing that's happening, the changes that's happening, is I think South Indian films generally across the slate. They have managed to keep that audience that began watching them from God knows when. Whereas I feel perhaps where Hindi has maybe altered a little bit is the fact that I think, you know, they were trying to chase the Western validation and trying to sort of, you know, it kind of lost that essence, which I really miss as well, uh, very deeply, like what we saw in the Raj Kapoor days as well. So it's interesting to hear you say that because obviously with South India, they still managed to have kept that audience. Do you not think that perhaps, uh, you know, making stories that actually do exist, like for example, 17 is a prime example of that. Do you not think that is what kind of will, you know, set us apart from the others as well? Uh, yes, see, the thing is, uh, with popular cinema, uh, I would I would not call it, uh, you know, Hindi or South Indian, or I would distinguish them as popular and uh, parallel cinema. What is happening with, uh, with popular cinema is that uh, they are looking outwards. Meaning they are asking themselves the question, what do the audience want? Uh, but by in parallel cinema, what I ask is, how do you tell a good story? You don't care about uh, what an audience wants. Because if you tell a good story, an audience will like it. it it's another matter whether you are able to uh, promote it properly and make the film reach people. That's another matter. But just when it comes to making film, the question we are, uh, people, you know, the commercial side, the popular side is asking the wrong question. They are asking what people want. That is when where they are failing actually. Instead of that, if they just ask themselves, what is a good story? How do you write you know, write a good script? How do you make a good film? Stick to the basics, then you will get it. It's not that hard. But then because we are looking outwards instead of inwards, I think that's the difference between popular cinema and uh, you know parallel cinema. Mm, right, and I think also. Uh... I think the change in people's mindsets in India has a has changed vastly. You know, I think there was this sense that we, you know, Western people are looking at us and saying, "Oh, gosh, we are like this." But I think what's happening now, there's a sense of self-reliance, there's a sense of self-pride, which I think we Indians are now having. I mean, some will still run away from showing that pride, but that's a very different matter. <laughs> but you know, I think that's also a very positive thing. You know, I think the rise in in, in South films is definitely you know, a, a testament to that, which I will be talking about very shortly. But I wanted to go back and speak to the actors, actually, to you both, about whose work do you really admire? Um, and, you know, who would you say is perhaps an inspiration? Because you guys are obviously uh, doing ordinary jobs, but yet you've managed to really explode on screen. So I would love to know your perspectives on that. So Shalin, do you want to go first? And then Neeraj, we can come to you. Uh, yeah, uh, like to be very honest, I'm not a big fan of watching movies. I like acting, but uh, I have rarely watched movies. Like sitting for two hours and uh, watching is not my thing. So, but I would say that I'm I'm kind of inspired by Priyanka Chopra, like the success she has now. I feel like reaching to that height. And when it comes to acting, Radhika Apte, like I have, I've watched her some of her movies. So the realism she gets. Uh, is is a good so I guess those both are my ideals. Very good choices, that I must must say. Well done, nice ones. Uh, what about you, Neeraj? So my inspiration would be Shah Rukh Khan. There is a reason because uh, uh, the movie called Om Shanti Om. Uh -huh. As a kid, uh, I think most of them are like that. Most of the young <laughs> kids are like if you watch Krish movie, you want to be Krish for two three days, right? You want to be Spider Man after watching the movie. And this movie uh, was stuck in my mind. Like I wanted to be an actor uh, after watching the movie. I think it carried like through the ages, I would say. Shah Rukh Khan was my inspiration, I would say. Wow, it's so wonderful. I mean, Shah Rukh Khan has been like a cross-generational hero for so many of us. It's it's remarkable, the legacy that he set. But no, that's very, very interesting. And I think uh, what I wanted to specifically mention here is that... um. I think it's wonderful to see Kannada cinema exploding and how. Um, 
I mean, maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong, Prithvi, but there used to be a time when very few films used to actually come out from Kannada cinema, but now it's churning out so much more. I mean, last year you had so many back-to-back hits. I mean, obviously there was KGF, but uske saad saad you had Triple Seven Charlie, uh, you know, Kantara, of course. So, uh, you know, what do you think has really awakened audiences towards uh, the content in South? And they often say that local is global. So what local stories, which is what I kind of mentioned before as well, do you think needs to be explored a lot more now? Uh, well, to your first question, uh, what changed? I think uh, for a period of time, not number of films, I don't think it ever uh, went down. The number of films were uh, the same. They were the, the number of films that were getting censored every year uh, kind of remained high only in Canada. It was never low actually compared to other languages. But what was happening was for a period of time, uh, uh, I don't know how to put it. There was just a uh, just a series of bad storytelling for a few years in the middle. Uh, in the middle, I mean, I'm talking about some 10, 15 years for a long period. It, it uh, you know, it, there was just overall there was a, ba- a series of bad storytelling because because of which even one or two uh, good stories that came out here and there also got lost not that kannada films were not making uh, good films actually even they were making great films even then but they were one out of uh, 200 300 which was very you know a small in number but now i think with the uh, coming uh, with uh, the the you know emergence of the new gen newer generation a uh, lot more uh, good content is coming on screen and i think like i said we the people are looking inwards at least here the, uh, i mean of course even here you will see popular cinema that looks outwards but many are looking inwards like how do you tell a good story focus is on that and then you said uh, 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 a local actually that's what i i meant when i said looking inwards you know mm-hmm. you should look, when i say inwards you you, you look at yourself you look at your surroundings and then you focus on your storytelling rather than uh, uh, you said uh, the hollywood the bollywood was trying to you know kind of ape uh, the hollywood that again was actually looking outwards See, hollywood is making so many hit films so many uh, global hit films so we should imitate them and give uh, uh, hits if uh, you should imitate in the sense that's what people want that's the assumption that's so the, it all boiled down to the basic question what do people want that question in itself is wrong actually that is where people are uh, making the mistake the fundamental mistake hmm. if you just take out that question what do people want instead you ask the question what is a good story how do you tell a good story then i think you can always come up with good good films and you can focus a lot on uh, your own surroundings and bring out great stories you don't have to uh, you know, look outwards. Uh, I think that's the, uh, you know, difference that is happening in, in Canada films these days. Yeah, and I think it's it's great as well to just sort of see that. Yeah. I think, yeah, and, and, I, and I'm really happy as well that, you know, we have stories like that that are really creatively challenging. I mean, of course, you get some really bad films too, but uh, that's, again, another separate conversation. But, um, you know, I think when it comes to um, both you as actors as well, uh, I know, Sherlyn, you kind of said that you don't really prefer sitting there two hours to watch a film, which is kind of understandable. Uh, but I think uh, maybe, Sherlyn, if you can perhaps give some tips on uh, maybe other actors who might be watching, who maybe not be professionally trained, but have a passion for acting, and even Neeraj as well, after Shalin said, if you could also share, what advice would you give to people who are not professionally trained? They have, you know, nine to five jobs, but yet also have this passion to sort of be in front of the camera. What would you say? No, I am not, like, I haven't reached that height to inspire people or tell you advices. But I would say when I was acting, I realized one thing that more than uh, knowing what you like, what you have to do, if we consider that if we were in that situation, what we would do. So if we think like that and act, I think it will come naturally. And uh, they have to find their own opportunities. Yeah. A, li- yeah. a little hustle is required mm. if they really want to do something in this. Very true. I, I think that's very, very right. He said, what about you, Neeraj? Yes, sir. I would say um, don't be like uh, too confident. Uh, be self-critic. 
learn there is always uh, time to learn sir even uh, the most brilliant actors they can improve uh, so uh, keep on learning i would say and uh, um the, i don't know whether i i, I am like worthy of saying like uh, tips and all but yeah a character is given to you so you uh, understand the character and uh, think as the character not you actually because you wouldn't do the same thing as the character would do uh, so you have to think as a character you have to um, put your uh, uh, mind mindset you have to change your mindset as the character and uh, think what he would do uh, rather than what i would do. so yeah so. very true i think to put yourself in that shoes i think is very important uh i think prithvi you know um uh i mean not going to spoil it for anyone of course but i mean the I... film left me choked uh for obviously understandable reasons uh so do you have any intention on perhaps continuing the story i mean what's the plans for taking this forward and i think even for future as well uh what other type of stories do you think will really challenge you further uh well see uh, as far as this story is concerned there is a lot to be explored in fact i would say that this is only the setup uh, we have uh, plenty of things to explore uh, but then the question is how well this film is going to do because if this film doesn't uh, do financially well for us then <laughs> i can't think of making a sequel Yeah. so it is important that this does well only then there is the possibility of a sequel with you know for which i already have a lot of story uh and uh, also if you have noticed uh, a lot of the motivations of the I mean, motivations of many of the characters have been kept a bit ambivalent uh, you don't know you can't really pinpoint and figure out okay what is in their mind why they are doing this those are the opportunities that i have to explore in the sequel if there is a sequel but like i said as of now i really don't know whether uh, that's going to happen or not at this stage uh, it all depends on a number of factors uh but then when it comes to stories without a doubt my uh, the kind of stories that i want to explore are going to be complex stories i don't want to uh, you know make simple I, it's i don't mean to say that i don't like simple stories i do like simple stories but i think i am at that stage where i need to explore uh, complex situations and complex realities of life uh and that's what i will be doing in the future as well mm-hmm. and you know i think prithvi because you've been a filmmaker for quite some time but you know i think financial uh backing is such a important thing but yet it can be such a laborious thing as well you know because sometimes you have to really find the right investors who are also on the same have the same vision as you uh you know over the years especially perhaps with 17ers how tough has it been in getting the correct backing um and when let's just say hypothetically an independent filmmaker is not able to get that backing how should one continue to make that story and get their voices <laughs> heard uh well regarding 17ers i have been lucky because uh, most of the backers in the film are my classmates and my uh, brother's colleagues Oh, so okay. it's mostly uh, our own circle circle of people so that way i've been very lucky that they have been very supportive uh, so that's how 17ers happened uh, but uh, with respect to indie films in general uh, independent films uh, filmmakers who are uh, trying to uh, you know uh, make money i think with uh, respect to their first film i would say that give it a lot of time give it enough time so give it a push i know you, you we are always in a hurry to make our first film or even second third fourth films uh, but just uh, control your eagerness control your enthusiasm and give it some time give it two years three years to develop the uh, you know project first give it sufficient time to develop the script and then give sufficient time to develop the uh, project because when you uh, give sufficient time now you have so many opportunities that you can take the take your project uh outside of india get funded uh, you know from uh, various countries make it a collaboration make it a co-production between india and uh, some other country that way funding uh, does not only become easy it also uh, becomes risk free you don't have to you, you're not under any pressure to uh, you know recover that money because most of them come as uh, uh, grants or even if they come as co-production there are no riders to that Mm-hmm. uh that is only later on they might expect some sharing but otherwise there is no pressure that you have to recover money you have to make a profit out of it 
Uh, so that's why for the indie filmmakers, I suggest that give sufficient time. There is There are plenty of opportunities nowadays uh, for you to explore your project. Take it to different places, take it to different countries, uh, take it to uh, various markets, uh, get funded, and then make the film. That's the way to go in the future for independent filmmakers. Beautiful. Well, look, I mean, I think it's been such a pleasure and an honor to have all of these with me on Filmy Filmy. Uh, I think it's so empowering to see such a wonderful film to come out of India. Uh, and I think Seventeeners is definitely a very huge milestone because, like I said, there's very few teen films that we have that amalgamate so many different, you know, layers, especially that are relevant to legalities and of course the society so i think a huge congratulations to all of you for putting this wonderful work together and wishing you all the very best for your upcoming projects and i cannot wait to see what people have to say after they've watched it at new york indian film festival so thank you so much guys for joining me on filmy show it's been such a pleasure thank you Anuj. thank you so thank much you. for having us and giving us this opportunity uh, thank you, Filmy Shilmi uh, uh, team. And uh, hopefully we will get a good response in uh, New York Indian Film Festival and hopefully we will have a good theatrical release soon. Thank for you so sure, much. For sure. Can't wait to hear more. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.